All right, and then this was really fascinating. So Wiggle.net published, uh, as they said, the T on law enforcement and mobile phone location. So this is actually the FBI's guide on how to retrieve cellular data. And I really enjoyed reading this because I read almost the entire guide, um, but it talks about how to get data from AT&T, T-Mobile, and Verizon. Um, and it shows the granular detail of all of the types of requests that can be granted, the limitations that these companies have on the kinds of data that is possible to be uh, uh, supplied about you. So some of this was also interesting to see that, uh, you know, there's companies who will retain this data for almost 10 years or longer. So that means that some of these slides are just basically instructing the FBI agents in how to work with these companies and what their expectations should be for the kind of data that that company will have about a particular suspect or person that they're trying to investigate. Some of the examples of cell phone towers designed to blend into the environment, I think hmm. that the cactuses are by far the most convincing. Yeah, um, they're pretty inconspicuous. Although the grain silo is like, it's a little too skinny for me, but I guess I guess I can get with it. This one's like fine, I guess. Um, but this one is just disrespectful in my opinion. Is that in the middle of the graveyard? I'm not sure. <laughs> if it is in the middle of the graveyard, then I think it's very, very disrespectful. Um, but anyway, uh, so you can see some more of the slides here. It talks about like the amount of location-based services each provider has, uh, the engineering data sets that you'll be expected to retrieve. Um, and this is really interesting. Um, so if you are someone who is has just been curious about what kinds of information is being stored about you by your cellular provider and what FBI agents can expect to get from it, uh, well, if you're using Sprint, they'll hold on your data for 10 years. Hmm. So if you basically ever use Sprint, then uh, the subscriber information exists for 10 years. Although you can see US Cellular, seven years, Verizon, five, uh, three to five years, uh, AT&T, seven years. So that's a, lot of, that's a lot of years. SMS tolls, cell site SMS, seven years. Man, that's a lot. So you can see there are there's lots of information. Look, oh, it stores video for seven years. Um, Voicemails, yes, all stored. Uh, so you can read, they can get all of your voicemails. Internet slash web browsing, one year. Um, wow. So uh, there really is a lot of data that's collected by these uh, cell phone providers. And again, this is like a, this actual PDF is very long. I've read the entire thing. If you want to go and check this out, um, I, I believe that it's one of the links here. Let's you just download the whole thing as a PDF. and just, Oh, here it is. It's not very well broken out. Um, there we go. Um, so this is the actual data set itself. It is 139 pages and it is an okay read. I appreciate whoever put these slides together, um, not making it so boring. But you know, it is a fascinating view of the way that these technologies work, the way that modern investigators will access this information and the limitations that they actually face. So again, if you're a big nerd and wanna know about how this works, or if you're a criminal that's nervous about getting caught, then you should probably read this. Uh, but either way, I'm I'm, I guess in the former category. And I think that this stuff is absolutely fascinating, just learning the way that this process works and what kind of information is stored.